So the audio on this clip didn't work out so well, so give all your love to Agouti, our wonderful channel editor, as he regales us with dulcet tones of a time long past. Hello everybody and welcome back to Mechabellum. We have another viewer submitted game for our viewer submitted Saturdays. I think that's the day we'll upload these. It is DF Taco versus Viper. And yes, I verified uh, Taco is the way that he prefers that is pronounced. Taco coming in here with a couple of arc lights, some Phoenix, and it looks like he's just unlocked crawlers. Ooh, and what's this? Oh, hello, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, he has some snipers that he's going to use to counter the Phoenix. Yes, Viper has played some snipers to counter the Phoenix here. A very astute observation there, sweet pea. Um, I am joined by my lovely co-host. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, this, I really like both these builds from both players. Actually, I think that Viper is probably slated a little bit in this opening round. So... For those who don't know, these tanks do extremely well in the early game, at least taking out uh, chaff units. And importantly, they'll be able to clear the chaff units and give enough time for the snipers to clear away the rest of the single entities. Normally, I would be a little bit more hesitant about this, but because Viper is a giant specialist and DF Taco is the cost control specialist, these tanks will be able to survive a Phoenix shot, I believe. Yes, the Phoenix coming in at 2,800 damage, the tanks having 3,200 health. Normally, Phoenix is one-shot tank, but that cost control specialist will really work in the favor of Viper here for the first round. And they're off. And they're off to the race as <laughs> they go. Uh, it looks like these crawlers will be cleaned up very quickly by the arc light here in the southern flank. That is unfortunate. But the tanks really make a great job of it. In fact, this arc light was just shooting at the wrong thing and actually gets taken out by uh, crawlers. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah, DF Taco does not look like he's going to be winning this round. DFO Taco, excuse me. Uh, really, really good shots here. It's a small loss, but it actually basically just evens up the game. Because as a cost control specialist, you're probably going to lose the first round or two. Just because that extra $100, you can't get a third unit with it in the early game. So, or at least in round one. You could potentially use the 100 to spend on some upgrades, but I wouldn't recommend it. Better to save the cash to see if something interesting comes out, and both players do have Mustangs available to them. And this is why you save that extra 50 bucks, because now we could see three units of Mustang here from DFO Taco versus the two from Viper. Now, Mustangs won't perform very well against the tanks, but they will perform well against other Mustangs and Crawlers. And given that DFO, Taco was just struggling a little bit with chaff clear. I think actually getting three of these is a just phenomenal play. One, he puts it in the back line, so any units coming off these flanks are more likely to get targeted down by the Mustangs, and also having the third one negates any early damage coming out that way. Yeah, good missile strike. The taking out one whole unit of tanks is extremely important. It just means that there's no armored bodies to protect the sniper, and the sniper is just going to have too many units to shoot at. Looks like our center might collapse here, but not before the Phoenix are able to get in on these tanks. Yeah, this looks this is looking pretty good here for DFO Taco. Good shooting. Here comes the Phoenix Blammo. Boom. <laughs> and boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> we need to get you like a little catchphrase. You know, like how, she, um, what was his name? Emerald? But I was go, bam! Oh, bam, yeah. bam! You need to be like, you need to have a thing. You can go like, shabuzzy or something. What? I don't know, it'd be great. Um, Let's see. Viper picks up the portable shield. DF Otako grabbing the missile. I do like the portable shield, and especially because Viper is a giant specialist. He's able to play out this uh, Vulcan very, very quickly. Um, let's see what old DF Otako does to try and counter this. Of course, he doesn't know about the Vulcan, but he does know that his opponent is a giant specialist. And normally around three, round four, is where you start to see a lot of giants come into play if you're going to see giants. Uh, any later than the mid game, giants become like a kind of uh, um, a catch your opponent out kind of move just because there's normally enough smaller units to clean them up. Um, what I mean by that is let's say that there wasn't any air units, then all of a sudden the giant specialist in round like five or to 10 might just grab, ooh, what is this? Uh, 
That was a great pickup for Taco. Yeah, it looks like a bunch of Phoenix with range. He actually sniffs this out extremely well. Um, it's really going to work out here because these Phoenix have the highest single point damage in the game uh, per shot. Granted, you know, melting points will kill a uh, giant much quicker. Uh, but Vulcans Look at don't that shoot up. Big guy compared to <laughs> other the little guys. Look at him burn him, committing war crimes. <laughs> Man, this actually will work out pretty darn well here for uh, Viper's flank, but I think the Phoenix are still going to be enough to clean this up. Just because this left flank will fall, and it's all down to these two snipers. Uh, two snipers versus what looks to be about eight Phoenix. Oh, he's doing the business. Down goes one sniper, down goes the other. Okay, this can only go in the way of DFO Taco. Um, I would be interested in knowing how to actually pronounce that, and if you're in the chat for the video, um, please tell us. I do appreciate the email that you just saying, say taco just because it's easier. So thank you very much. Let's speed this up for a moment. Oh, we don't oh. have to. Yeah. What do we say? Shabanzi? What did you say? Shaboozy. Shaboozy. There we go. <laughs> Shaboozy. <laughs> I just figured it would be like a Sims reference or something. Wargity, shwargity. Wargity, shwargity. Oh, Jesus. I love the Sims. <laughs> Good. Um, very important. Ouch. <laughs> it's the sound of our glasses clacking together. God, the ultimate nerd couple. <laughs> the glasses get tangled up. <laughs> yeah. You know, I did actually um, break into your glasses case. I think it was yesterday because you, you always keep the, the little like cleaning wipe in there. Mm -hmm. So I went in there and stole that shit. Oh, no. Yeah, and you're never getting that back. Um, anyways, it looks like we're getting the... the uh, the startings of a couple of good giants here. Now, I don't actually like the um, Fortress Anti-Air Barrage very much. It just isn't a very good um, tech card. The Barrage tends to miss. Even if it's like shooting at four units of Phoenix, what will happen is the Barrage will go off, the first two will hit, and then instead of arcing towards the rest of the Phoenix, the thing just shoots off into random space. It's very much like Stormcaller shots coming out of your fortress. They're a little bit more directed, and they're a straight line instead of arced, but they they can still pass, like, they just miss a ton. I've even seen missiles pass through small gaps like this and just miss all of the Phoenix. It's really, really weird. Oh, wow, a good flank wow. coming in here from Viper. Yes, and this is one of those really special things. I want to slow this down to talk about it for a second. A lot of players don't realize that you can do this, but... What happened is that Viper um, picked up the, uh, the um, uh, skill card that allows him to deploy a shield. And that shield is the only deployable shield in the game that you can play on the flank. So he actually spent three units on the flank, which is just un unheard of, but actually work out fairly well here if the arc light can take that out. It's an extremely good play and it's very, very aggressive. It's not something that we see done very often. And because of that, a lot of players don't prepare for it. Luckily, this fortress and uh, a bunch of units were in the back line to support it. However, I don't think this fortress will be long for the world fighting off all of these Phoenix. And the Phoenix do have range. Um, oh, you see, that's what I'm talking about. Did you see that? Yeah. All of those missiles just missed. It literally went right through the Phoenixes. Let's see if it can get another barrage off. It does. Great. Oh, no, they were too easy. Yeah, well, I mean, they got kind of kicked in the butt, but... <laughs> Yeah, the anti-air barrage on the fortress is terrible. If if there were less missiles, but they were heat-seeking or something, I would take that, you know? But right now, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I hate that tech. In fact, I don't even run the anti-missiles on my fortress because I've had such bad luck with it. Mass upgrades coming out here for um, DFO Taco. Ooh, and the splash damage upgrade on the Mustang. I really like that. It means that the Mustang will struggle to kill the tanks, but Mustang already struggled to kill the tanks. Ooh, what is going on here, mm. though? Okay. What? <laughs> it's just cool how the units come down from the sky like that. It is cool. It's just a little weird. Mmm. <laughs> Um, okay, this looks good though. I'm just watching. Yeah, man, go for it. Really good stuff. And I really enjoy um, playing these games with you, sweetheart, and casting with you. It's good to get a little bit of a different perspective on the game. I like this upgrade uh, quite a bit here by Viper. Viper did go with the intensive training. Um, it is really important to note that if you're going to use the intensive training, Use it on a unit that is just summoned in, though. So that Viper's been on the field for a while, so it would have already earned a lot of XP. 
So you're leveling a unit that's already closer to leveling than a brand new unit. This fortress has zero XP. Well, 26, because I guess it shot something. Whereas the Vulcan may have had several hundred XP. So it's definitely worth leveling the unit that's just come in because it's just more value for your dollar. Once again, just absolutely terrible shots here yeah. from the fortresses. It's ridiculous. They're missing. Yeah, let's see. Oh, that looks pretty good. Okay, well, one fortress killed three, one fortress killed or killed two, one fortress killed nothing. Oh. Yeah. Shaboozy. Shaboozy. <laughs> and unfortunately, these snipers don't have a range upgrade, so the Phoenix are actually outranging them. Normally, Phoenixes don't outrange snipers. Ooh, this is really important. Oh, that sniper. That sniper unfortunately gets slowed down at a really un inopportune time. Oh, come on, Fortress. You've just got to tank. You've got to tank one more shot. Can oh. the sniper get in range? It all comes down to this. The shot goes out. Sniper will win this. Okay, small comeback here for Viper. Um, that, I like that. I like it when it's a little bit more of a game, you know? You don't want to just completely dominate. And the top supply specialist is coming out here right now. That looks pretty good. Um, let's see if uh, DFO Taco has an answer to all of these giants. If any more giants come out, it's uh, something I like to call a rumbling. But let's see if that does happen here. Um, looks like more phoenixes and leveled phoenix. That's an important part of this. Okay, more Mustang as well here for Viper. Viper's nervous about these ranged Phoenixes. And the best way to deal with that is exactly what he did, grabbing a few more Mustang, or uh, uh, range upgrade on the Marksman. Obviously having more Mustang is great, but um, this flank is actually slated to do a lot of damage. Uh, just because this missile support uh, has the potential to flame maybe maybe two units. Unfortunately, these snipers having range means that they have tons of range on this, but we shall see. Let's speed it back up for a second here. Oh, and I do like this as well. One of the best things that you can do for any of your units is increasing the range, because it normally means that they'll get two or three more shots off, um, which is just totally worth it. Um, let's take a look-see here. Looks like some more... Oh, wow, just a nice menagerie of units. In fact, are these going to go on the flank? Yes. Okay. A good old flanking attack. A good old flanking attack. Um, so what what Viper has done here is just double down on the flank, especially while this missile drops. Oof. Fortunately, half of those units die, but so do half of these. And now there's two uh, two groups of Phoenix in the back line backed up by an arc light. That looks very, very good. This, um, ooh, will the Phoenix be enough? The Vulcan really cuts through the front line. He just needs more support to kill Chaff in the center. That looks to be okay. These Phoenix, unfortunately, will take a very long time to kill a fortress. In fact, they will not be able to do so. Uh, given the number of Phoenix, though, I do have to give this over to old Taco again, just because he's got the units. You know, he, there's enough Chaff, there's enough units to make it work. Oh my god. This little arc lights facing down his giant brother. <laughs> yeah, it He's didn't trying so hard. <laughs> he can. Uh, sometimes you just got to have the heart of the cards. And once again, the missiles miss. I think, yeah, I think they why got... Why do they keep missing? I don't know. I don't know why the fortress missiles are so bad. There we go. He finally gets a double kill with those, those missiles. Do they increase in damage? I think they do. Um, per level of the fortress. I'm going to have to take a look at that here. Uh, just because I, I absolutely hate this tech. Absolutely hate it. In fact, I'm thinking about doing a, a video series on upgrades that are worth taking and not taking given the current state of the game. Each guided missile deals 900 damage and has a range of 180. No, so it doesn't look like they uh, they do scale. That's not great because these Phoenix now have 4,871 HP. Uh... If anybody in the comments, without using their calculator, can divide 4,871 by 900 and tell me how many missiles have to hit this level 3 Phoenix to kill it, I'd be very interested. And remember, there's two of them, and these missiles are not guard guided by any means. Uh, anyways, Viper's still setting up for the super heavy flank. It's causing, uh, or sorry, DF Taco... DFO Taco, still setting up for the super heavy tank. Ooh, and I like this on the Phoenix, increasing their damage by a lot. He's going to need these Phoenix to be dealing a lot more damage because as, the as these giants continue to level up, they're just becoming more and more dangerous. And I think um, Taco just keeps trying to close out the game by picking up interesting skill cards 
not a bad thing to do, but he missed out on the range specialist, hoping that, hey, I'm just going to burn off a lot of these units. I'll win the game clear and done. I don't need to worry about it. And that could actually come to burn him if he doesn't win the game this round. Wow, a lot of upgrades on the Phoenix. Charge shot is fantastic. Lots of damage. It's offset by the elite marksman. So yes, your range is decreased by 25, but the Elite Marksman increases it by about 16, given that all of these Phoenix are level two. So not, not the super bad. Unfortunately, that missile does scoot its way in there. And these Wasps are able to kill Phoenix, um, even while they're underneath the shield, because aerial units do not count as being under shields. Uh, for those who didn't know that, there's another tip. Wasps all die to the Mustangs very quickly though. Oh my God, this level three fortress is gonna take a huge amount of damage. Same with this, uh, this Vulcan. Another thing that's worth noting, especially if you do like playing as the Giant Specialist, Giants take a long time to level up and they give a lot of XP when they die. So they, they really are like a double-edged sword, but they're both, both edges are pointing back at you. Um, yeah, if your Giants die, it's almost guaranteed that the unit that kills them is going to level. In fact, let's take a look at these Phoenix. Well, they're almost gonna level anyways. We'll see who gets the kill here. Oh gosh, I like these little tanks trying to... Oh wow! The tanks did... Or that, that missile barrage did quite well. Um, and some level 3 arc lights. That's crazy. Anyways, um, old Taco must win this. And that's why I really like having at least one unit of flying units. You don't have to overcommit to the air. Um, but having at least one flying unit is really, really nice. Just because it allows you to win rounds that you normally wouldn't. Because hey, all of your stuff that shoots up is dead. Rhino coming into the back line of DF Taco. I do like that. This is his own Rhino, mind you. It's the red player's Rhino on the red player's field. Um, I think that's a really wise decision just to have another thing on the ground. That Rhino is unupgraded. That Rhino is unupgraded, um, so it's not going to do very much here. And as this flank doesn't level or deal any damage, it's very unlikely to continue to uh, to perform very well. Wow, fully upgraded on tech Phoenixes. That's not something you see every day. Well, these Phoenixes could use a little bit of support um, if Taco wants to continue with them, just because I would imagine eventually these Mustang will get the anti-air upgrade. Yeah, that he does have the aerial... Um, oh my... He does have the aerial specialization available to him for Viper. And given how many uh, units or how much cash is invested in these Phoenixes, I would be uh, I would be remiss and say that that would go uh, inappropriately. I think it would be very smart of him to grab the aerial there specialist. There goes the Rhino. There goes the Rhino. Very good pick out there, sweetheart. Um, yeah. I feel like he went full speed ahead immediately. Everyone else kind of started walking slow. Mm -hmm. He landed and immediately took off. Yep. Rhinos have one job, and that job is kill. Yeah, it didn't work out so great there. <laughs> like, RIP. RIP, little rhino. Uh, this fortress is hitting for 22,000 damage a shot. Wow, the rumbling is real. And let's see if there's enough wasps here to make this work. I don't think so. Honestly, I... Well, I don't know. There's quite a few wasps and quite a few snipers. The snipers have range, and these phoenixes don't. Uh, no, I think this will be the end of it. I can't imagine all the Phoenix get shot down here. There's only three Phoenix. It's going to take them a long time to kill this fortress, though. Is it? Was that long enough? The snipers come online. Down goes the tower. I think that Viper has this round, actually. Wow. Not by much. But it's a little comeback. And actually having those ex that extra range on the snipers is really important. Um, parasitic ammo is extremely good for both players. So is the Elite Stormcaller. So one of the best counters to a lot of giant units and a lot of both giants and tanks are storm callers. Storm callers hit exceedingly hard um, and they don't often miss giants. They still can. I have had storm callers shoot at I have no idea what and somehow miss a fortress moving at the speed of like ass 4.5 <laughs> speed or whatever uh, six speed on the fortress. So I don't know. Actually. Opting for these arc lights to have the anti-aircraft ammunition, um, just allowing them to shoot up to help try and take care of some of these wasps. I think that's a great idea from DF Taco, DFO Taco. I just don't know why Viper hasn't picked up this aerial specialization. There are still a lot of units here that could go for the air, even if... Uh, so, 
how you win a Mustang Mustang War is you have your Mustangs outrange the enemy Mustang. Um, granted, the splash really helps in Mustang Wars, but if these uh, these level two Mustangs had range and aerial specialization, I would quickly see them kind of being the keystone of this army, as they would be able to annihilate the majority of the enemy units. Um, that flank is continuing to try and push, now backed up by another unit of Mustang. Unfortunately, it's just not going to be enough, and the shield really holds up well. But what it does have, or what it is doing, is delaying a lot of these units, um, which means that this right-hand side can collapse on the center and left of uh, his opponent, which is quite good. Um, having your units be able to all group together, especially in something like a sniper war, which is basically what we're seeing right now, um, is is very good. Just because then you have the majority of your shots going out. Unfortunately, having all the Phoenix group together could be quite bad. I'm not sure if these missiles... Nah, they, they don't do anything. I was going to say, I'm not sure if the missiles are affected by the uh, loss of the tech, but yeah, yeah, they do. And I think this will be the end of it. Once again, another missile barrage, missile barrage goes out, and nothing happens. Down goes the fortress. It looks like this is Taco's game. Blam, blam, blam. Down goes the sniper. Really good plays by both players. Um, yeah, if, if Viper had got aerial specialization, I think that would have worked for him a little bit better. Did you have any observations, Sweet Pea? No, but that was a really good game. I like how, uh, no offense, Taco, but I like how in, uh, was it round seven that he came, Viper came back? Just a little bit of a punch mm -hmm. to the gut. It's yeah. like the boxer that's been in the corner just opens up with a quick haymaker. <laughs> Quite good. Well, um, I hope you guys have all enjoyed the videos. If you do, like and subscribe and submit your games, and Bree and I will commentate over them. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Mechabellum. Hello, Bree. It's also Bree. That's right. I am joined by my lovely co host uh, and wife, Bree. We have a 2v2 uh, viewer game. Just Bree and Kaze, or Ka Kaz? How would you say it? Kaze. Kaze. Versus Fat Dean and T Goods. Man, Fat Dean. What a great name. Like, oh my god. You could put fat in front of like so many names and that would work. Hey, what's your name? Oh, I'm Fat Joe. Oh, okay, Fat oh, Joe. Oh, no. Dude, don't be rude. I, I would like to be Fat Joe. Um, Just Bree opens up with Giant Specialist. Uh, their partner is going to have Elite Specialist. Okay, actually quite good combo there. T Goods opening up with Aerial Specialist versus, and his partner, what was it? Fat, Fat Dean. That's yeah. right. Good old Fat Dean. Lots of tanks and arc lights. Okay, nothing that shoots up. And I believe they're the one facing off. Oh, no, not against the aerial specialist. Okay, that makes sense. Something you always want to make sure of when you actually open up in a 2v2 is that at least one of your uh, one friendly player has units that shoot up, especially when you're playing against something that, or someone that has a uh, aerial specialist. It doesn't look like any of the players have the aerial specialist except for T Goods. T Goods does open up with a unit of wasps. Uh, I guess those could eventually be killed off by the Fang if the Fang don't all die, but I'm not sure the Fang will all die here, just because they're going to have some solid support by these Stormcallers. Another really good tip, um, especially for any time that you're playing Mechabellum, but especially in a 2v2, Stormcallers are exceedingly good units, to the point at which they're kind of looking to be nerfed here soon, but because they have the longest base range in the game, they can actually come and support your friendly units or uh, your friendly much sooner than most other units. They're not very quick, but they do have just insane range. And if you see your opponent doesn't have anything fast, opening up with a couple of storm callers can be exceedingly powerful. These tanks will try and trundle along, and the storm callers will most likely shoot at the tanks and then end up crushing the arc light behind it. Let's see if this works out. Oh, well, good shots land. They. Good splash damage all across. How's it going over here for Bree? Bree seems to be doing quite well. Uh, it's unfortunately those wasps are gonna clean up the rest of the units. Bree has to lose that one, unfortunately, and it doesn't look like the Stormcallers had quite enough damage to deal with all the tanks. So that's un the unfortunate part about Stormcallers is if you only give them chaff to protect, uh, or to protect the Stormcallers, there's only chaff, they will almost certainly lose. Um, is there anything left that shoots up? I don't think so. I think this can only go one way, and that's in the way of our blue players. So, 
It is what it is. Good job to the blues. Lots of... Man, look at that guy just shoot away. So, at you previous episode, you'd asked me which little robot I would be. I kind of like him. He's got, like, these dumb little T-Rex arms. He's got a huge he cannon. He's very cute, too. He's pretty cute. And also, there's, like, a little cockpit right there. You can just kind of chill out in the arc light. Like, I imagine that's actually quite big. You could have, like, a couch or something in there. Tech spec coming up for just Bree. Uh, tech spec across the field so far, actually. Oh, my gosh. Every wow. player realizes tech spec is king. I love tech spec. Tech spec is a $50 um, uh, unit specialist. Specialists always show up here underneath the little, I guess, guy with a hat. I guess it's meant to be like a military dude. Um, your skill cards will always show up underneath that. So just in case you ever want to look at your opponent's field. Lots of arc light support coming out here for T goods. What is just Bree pickup? Looks like uh, anti-air on a unit of Mustangs. Good enough. One unit of Mustang should be enough to shut that down. I, oh my. I'm not sure about this though. Um, this elite specialist really should be playing out some type of warding for the Stormcallers. The Stormcallers can win this. They just need enough time to win it. Uh, best bet is a unit of tanks or something. Unfortunately, this uh, uh, red player here doesn't have a ton of cash. Because they're an elite specialist, all those units cost more. Instead, opts to play a unit of fang in the back line. Ooh, missile goes out. That looks pretty devastating. These Mustang will do a great job cleaning up the rest of those units. Stormcaller shots kind of whiff again. It is it is super disappointing that Stormcallers... I'm, I'm always on the fence about this. Stormcaller accuracy is hot trash. Mm -hmm. But if you can get a critical mass of Stormcallers, all of a sudden they're the best units in the game. Um, it's, it's a weird dichotomy with Stormcallers. This is looking good, though, for our blue players. Only just Bree survives and with a handful of units. Granted, these units could be everything that just Bree needs in order to clean this up, but I don't think she'll get the drop on these units. And without that, almost certainly will die. The tower went down at a really bad time. These Mustang are exposed. The Steel Balls really need to go in there and tank for them. Uh, there's enough Mustang, though, to clean up the rest of these Wasps. Wasps die to Mustang extremely quickly. Mustangs are our little gun trucks. These are the wasps. I do like the word wasps. Wasps? Yeah. Like the multiple yeah. wasps. Wasps. That's <laughs> how, that is correct, right? I'm not Yeah, yeah, you know, I just, oh, okay. I just... I like words that end like that. A sp -sp -sp -sp. A sp -sp -sp. Like snakes. Everybody likes snakes. No, like wasps. Wasps. -ps. Okay. <laughs> sure. Good, good for you, sweetheart. Cleo's so excited. Yeah, <laughs> Cleo yeah, is our lovely goes, little dog. Oh yeah, that's she, like how we like call her cat, over. Yeah. Or a cat outside, and she knows that I'm talking to a cat across the street. Do you normally talk to street cats? Yeah, there's one outside on the road right now, and I was playing ball with her. I was like, pss, pss, pss. why? And she's so excited because she knows that I'm talking about a little furry friend. Oh my god, don't talk to street cats. <laughs> no, that's how you get rabies. Nice. They're not nice. You got bit by a cat once. Yeah. Yeah, but it was not even a street cat, it was a porch cat. Yeah, well, you learned your lesson, didn't you? No. No? I'll uh, do it again. <laughs> I guess, and you'll get bit again, too. <laughs> yeah. No, because cats are weird, where, like, they roll over on their stomachs, so, like, or no, on their backs to get their stomachs pet, mm -hmm. and the second you touch their stomachs, they do, like, the little, like... Yeah, freak out thing? Yeah, like, the little, like, Hatcha bicycle cha. kicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll just tear your hand to ribbons with those bicycle kits. <laughs> it's true, man. Those those things have deadly sharp claws. Anyways, I, I do like these little anecdotes that we have with each other. Um, it's looking pretty dicey here for Just Bree. I do like the Steel Ball Mustang. Um, I think that's quite a good build. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot of meat or long range to back it up. That's going to take a couple more rounds for Just Bree to kind of complete that build. Meanwhile, our elite specialist is just playing out tons and tons of missiles and really has only made one major improvement, which, yeah, there's a couple of fang on the flanks, but those are going to easily be cleaned up. I do like the fang in the background, or these uh, Mustang in the background here for Just Breathe. That's a very wise decision. And they're going to come in here and pincer these units. Wow. Very well played. Those wasps don't stand a chance. Unfortunately, the steel balls do drop. 
And without that support, I'm not sure how... Oh, the Mustangs do quite well against these tanks. They're hanging in there. They're hanging in there. Those level 2 Mustangs. They are getting hit in the back, though. Unfortunately, the uh, these Mustangs do have range. That's going to hurt. Stormcallers are kind of making a comeback. Them being level 2 will make a difference here. Really needs another barrage right into that big group of Mustang, though. If a barrage can go out, they could potentially win this. Oh, that's a good... That's a good shot! That's a very good shot. All right. This is definitely going to go the way of the red player on this flank. In come the rest of the Stormcallers, though. And that might be enough to put this down. Or maybe not. One more shot. I think they've got this. I think our red players will finally win a round. Oh, my God. Did you see that? No. Look, it shot three missiles oh, yeah. and all three missed. There we go. Just on time to lose your tower, too. Oh, no. Never mind. Our red players can't win. There's a unit in the sky. So it's so nice just having... I don't really rate the aerial specialist very highly. But just having an aerial unit is quite strong. Um, because again, if nothing else shoots up, you win. Yep. Yep. Do you, oh, yeah. Do you have a favorite Mechabellum unit yet? I did you. Like the Vulcan? The or Vulcan? Or even the... Um, oh, what's the last one that I said? Fang? The light... What, what is it? I have no idea. Uh, looks like we're going to see some overlords deployed here by... Is this T-Goods? Yeah. No, it's not. Oh, wow. The giant spec and the aerial spec. So, this is something that you can do, which I would highly, highly recommend. Sorry about the camera there. I got very excited. If you're in a 2v2, you can play overlords. Overlords can spawn wasps, which unfortunately, uh, our player here does not have the overlord spawning wasp. But what you then do is place like four or five overlords in this one um, bottom corner and then have them boogie with the mobile beacon. And it looks like the old tea goods might be doing this. You can then have them boogie over to your friend's side and they spawn wasps the whole way. So all of a sudden the overlords re-engage on the enemy's um, side of the board with like three units of wasps in support. And if those wasps have any sort of upgrades, all of a sudden it's a nightmare. Um, I was playing a 2v2 with Call of War recently and the enemies did that to us. And we were like, we were crushing it absolutely dominating and then until, I, they did that. until they did that so i was like oh dude i've won my side easy and then call of war goes what the hell and all of a sudden there's like five overlords coming at him i was like oh that's where the overlords went <laughs> he's like bro i can't deal with this um very fun highly recommend it it's a really good strategy um once again it looks like Bree's actually going to do quite well here on this flank down go the rest of the oh no very close. Bree almost won that flank. And it looks like T Goods and Bree versus Old. It's hard, harder to keep track here, but Fat Dean is going to win this flank as well. It's a lot of damage coming out on Bree and Partner. Oof. That's got to hurt. Another lightning round here. Senior attack specialist for just Bree. I do like that. And for Kaz. Okay, this is where they can make a comeback, but it looks like everybody's just going to pick it. So the great thing about those attack specialists, defense specialists, all of those things, is that they offer a huge buff to your units. They're very expensive, and almost all players do pick them up, but on the off chance that your opponent doesn't pick it up, you suddenly will start to have an advantage. Not that first round, because you did spend a lot of money on it, but maybe two or three rounds later, you'll really start to see a difference in how your units perform against theirs. Um, Pretty darn good. Just Breed does have the attack damage increase on these Mustang as well. Uh, Mustang with the attack damage increase are actually surprisingly good at killing tanks. Once the tanks start to get things like the armor enhancement, that's where the Mustang will really drop off. But until then, they actually do cut through these units quite quickly. And importantly, these Mustang with the increased damage also do 75% increased damage to... Oh wait, what? These Mustang have missile interception. Are there any missiles? Oh yeah, the overlords count as missiles. Okay, so that cuts down on the overlords damage. Unfortunately, um, these Mustangs don't have the anti-air spec uh, unlocked, which would be incredibly important because there's a giant floating death ship in the sky. It's not enough without it. Yeah, it's not enough without it. Your little truck isn't gonna do well against like the Emperor's flagship or whatever this <laughs> is. What were those ships called in Star Wars that look like this? Um, I don't 
they like the big weird triangle ships. Apparently you can just like jump drive your triangle ship through the Death Star and you'll win or something. Yeah. What? Spoilers. I, I didn't watch the movie. Orbital bombardment's going out for all players. Don't laugh at me. Um, oh, T Goods actually went and got the heavy hackers. Well, that's quite fun. Heavy hackers are great. There's the aerial spec for the Mustang. Oh, no. Still no aerial spec for the Mustang. Bree, you're breaking my heart. What are you doing here? The range will really help. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I think actually having uh, that aerial specialization may be a little bit more useful at this point. But uh, still getting through those tanks is going to be an issue. Oh my gosh. And with the Miyamoto cannon, Bree thinks it's the end of the game and opts to pop the Midmite oil and get these... Um, round cards it looks like the uh storm callers have been upgrading nicely though for uh kaz versus fat dean god i love fat dean just it's such a good name that's like what you'd call like your best high school friend hey fat dean pass me a beer uh don't drink responsibly um don't drink responsibly <laughs> drink responsibly excuse me especially if you're underage don't drink at all um that's for the algorithm Good shooting, everybody. It looks like this uh, orbital bombardment isn't going to land at all. Wow. Yeah, mass skipping or uh, uh, just mass shielding really, really protected them there. And these Fang, man, I love the bricks of Fang. Look at them go. Mm -hmm. Taking down arc lights. They're going to get onto these overlords and fortresses soon. I don't think they'll have enough damage, but they are just going to pling away. Oh, my God. Look at them go. Down goes the fortress. They're going to be able to start. Start flanking these uh mustang very good and it looks like fat brie really turned it around fat brie excuse me just brie turned it around against um t goods t goods and fat dean my word um looking looking very good here looking very very good here these uh mustang although they don't have the aerial spec now have more than enough range to get in there and they're dealing a ton of damage well done red players making a bit of a comeback Mm hmm. Let's see. Jesper grabs the junior manufacturing specialist. I do like this. Kaz gets it as well. We're starting to see a huge buildup of these units. Fat Dean is is Fat Dean gonna choose the weird thing? I wish I could see their choices. No. Everybody goes for the junior manufacturing specialist. Pretty bog standard. Let's take a look here at what. Oh, very clever on Bree's part. Okay, so this is what Bree did to help win this flank. Distraction crawlers. Hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the, what's going to happen here is uh, at least the Overlord, potentially more units, are going to flow away from the main combat just to deal with these distraction crawlers. Uh, obviously, that's terrible because you have an exceedingly expensive unit wasting its time trying to kill this cheap unit. And the cheap unit, something like crawlers, can actually buggy around and get rid of the damage of this overlord for quite a while. Because if the overlord misses a couple of shots, that's a lot of time and money wasted. Uh, looks like T Goods is going to try and clean this up actually with a rhino. Kind of an expensive choice to clean up a unit of crawlers, especially with an upgrade on the whirlwind. May have just been cheaper to put a unit of wasps there or, I don't know, an arc light or something, but. It is what it is. Looks like T Goods is really setting up here. Um, very similar to several of the games that we've seen before. Mass Fang with Steel Balls. Really, I'm not sure if, or sorry, that wasn't T Goods that was doing that. That was Kaz. Kaz is setting up with the Fang. Good shooting there. I want to take a look over at Bree's side here. Look at these Mustang go. Man. Putting in the work. Great job, Bree. It's kind of fun because uh, I can say that I've been complimenting you this whole time uh, to my wife, Bree. Hooray! <laughs> it's, it's all the compliments for the night. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Good Stormcaller shots as well. In fact, it looks like this might be a complete wash here for our red players. Um, able to just storm both of the sides, destroy even these giant units. Wow, that's not something you see very often. Level 2 and level 3 Fang killing an, a, a fortress. But they did have a lot of support from these Stormcallers, though. That's where you gotta be careful. If the Stormcallers start to run wild, just like Melting Point, Stormcallers really benefit from levels. Just because Stormcallers hit so hard and have such long range, the longer the levels go on, the more difficult it will be. Wow. And a lot of different pickup here is from all of our players. 
I'd be, well, we'll take a look over at our right flank first. There's the fire. The fire is going to absolutely decimate these fang. And I, I will say that, who is this, Fat Dean? Fat Dean could really do with some Stormcallers of their own. Just because of the way that these units are deployed, those Stormcallers would actually be hitting very hard. Um, not only that, oh my god, tons of fang. Um, if those Stormcallers had fire, Fat Dean would be sitting pretty because these fang would all just disappear. If you ever want to know how to deal with mass uh, fang, getting a bunch of Stormcallers with fire is a good way to start and then follow it up with whatever counter unit they have. So in this case, the Steel Balls, I would counter it with a couple of Phoenix. Um, been playing a lot against this and so far I have a very good win rate. Looks like Bree is just going to continue forward with the Steel Balls and Mustangs. It's very, very interesting. How many units does Bree have on the left here? Quite a few, man. That's that's really annoying to look at. Um, looks like six units are unlocked here for Bree, but we only really see two, two unit types on the field. And well, that's kind of the, the mono builds or the best partner builds that we've been seeing come out more and more in the meta is that some units just pair with each other extremely well. Oh my gosh, can this heavy hacker even get one? No, the heavy hacker didn't have any support. Nope. Nope. Absolutely decimated. The fire of the Vulcan is going off. Mass fire on this flank as well. You know what those Vulcan could use on this right hand flank is the incendiary bombs. And I love all of these shields. Just keep building up more and more shields. Oh my god, this poor, poor overlord is just getting cut down by these fang. My god super aggressive fang and still a ton of mustang that's so much damage that is so much damage it doesn't look like kaz will be able to clear this up but fat dean um oh actually kaz does clean it up fat dean is not able to survive both players are pretty much even now let's see what they pick up Man, and what a great comeback so far. Mm -hmm. Speed spec makes a lot of sense here for Jess Bree. The barriers make sense for Fat Dean and T-Goods as they have, both have a lot of giants. And it's interesting to note that when the giants came out here for our uh, blue players, it's kind of when they started losing. And I don't want to say giants are bad, but they are just such a heavy point investment that they need a lot of support in order to work well. Giants can either be your uh, the thing that wins the game for you, or you will hard lose because of giant units. That's why I tend to only grab a few of them, maybe two Vulcan with a bunch of snipers. Yawning. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> uh, maybe having some uh, other units that work well with them, and you know this uh, poor hacker here is completely unsupported. Oh, wow, yeah, like mega unsupported. That thing needs range or something. Um, oh, well, we'll find out in a minute. I think this is going to go in the way of our red players, though. The red players should easily be able to clean this up. Yeah. Make a comeback. Make a comeback. A mega comeback, even. Can you say mega comeback? No. Okay. <laughs> um, it looks good. Looks very good. And welcome back to Mechabellum. Wow. <laughs> we are, uh, it's me, your main host, Joe, joined by... Bree. And she did a great job opening <laughs> up on that. That was not planned. All righty. We've got Bear Counter versus our blue player. Bear Counter actually opening up the Supply Specialist. Now, the Supply Specialist nets you an extra $50 per round. Um, it's considered to be, if not the best specialist, one of the best specialists in the game, just because it gives you such an economic lead. And Mecha Bellum is really a game of the academy. You I got... love a good passive income. Oh, do you now? Oh, do I now? Oh, do you now? Tell me all about your passive income. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a passive income. Soon. 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 But not yet. That's what your 401k is. It's a passive income. I know. But I meant like Airbnb or like how people like post YouTube videos and they just like get views and it yeah, makes I'm like 20 waiting for that to happen for sure for sure <laughs> so make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed yeah. I was yet. wondering if that was like your backhanded <laughs> slap at me yeah like some people actually post YouTube videos that get views so you know if that happened that'd be great no <laughs> that would be pretty good so, anyways, it looks like our red player is um, opening up with a pretty hard headbutt here. Bear went with a little bit more of a slap. Um, a slap is what I call just like a single line down the field. 
Headbutts are when you place all of your units on one side. Um, the, the, the reason I don't consider like a front line or a center line a headbutt is because, uh, once again, this is a game of the economy, but also, just like in StarCraft, if we do have uh, quite a bit of StarCraft II kind of crossover in, in this game, uh, your flanks being uh, open is not great because units could collapse here, but these steel balls, let's see if they can race down the field quick enough to actually get in there and kill the tower because obviously this headbutt is going to work very well. Oh no, the steel balls are going to get delayed by these crawlers. Poor bear's units are going to be overwhelmed. They um, got held up. They got held up. And once again, this is a viewer submitted game. So if you'd like to see us, um, you know, cast your games, submit it to the email below. I'd be happy to do this with my lovely co-host, Brad. By the way, I was just thinking, what if somebody clicked on the video, immediately heard my voice, and was like, ugh, no, and clicked out. <laughs> that would be so mean. I hope that doesn't happen. Probably not, no. but I just thought about that. Poor like, I'm not here for Brie. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's here for Brie. Oh, what's that, um, Oscar the Grouch? Yeah. Yeah, 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 or Eeyore. Nobody likes Eeyore. Okay, well, Bear has to deal with this. The best way, I think, to deal with it would probably be some storm callers. Um, just because all those units bunched up right here and having a couple of storm callers there would really, really help. Um, it would just allow them to, to kind of, or them, to just really punch through this line. Instead, opting for a bunch of Fang. Um, fang are pretty good, and I think we might be seeing the start of a Fang build. There's the Mechanical Rage, probably the most important upgrade for the Fang. Our red player does opt to kind of skip these... Um, or to, to get rid of his fang. Interesting. Instead goes with Phoenix. Now, fang with mechanical rage are more than a match for a group of Phoenix. Uh, now, if those Phoenix were in the back line, that'd be a different story. And when I see an opening like this, you don't need to capitalize on it immediately, but given how these units are all set up in a straight line, if you can start putting units in the back line to just disrupt this formation, it forces them to play units of their own and allows you to kind of regain control of the center. Um, so that, that's a good way to think about these things. You don't want to do it too quickly, because if you alert your opponent to the fact that you've realized... Then they're on to you. Then they're on to you. So you want to wait until a later part in the game where you can really make that swing turn. Where, oh, I got your tower. Now I'm going to do like 2,000 damage to you. That's good enough. Yeah. Let it be your swing turn. Your swing turn. Here comes the opening engagement. These poor little fang are going to get absolutely decimated. Oh, the poor boys. However, they're making a fairly good showing for themselves on this right flank. They're not going to get any of the steel balls, but they do they do, do a significant amount of damage. And the Fang are still in here. They're cleaning up the crawlers. I don't think... I think this will go in the way of Bear. There are enough Fang left on the field to kill off these Phoenix. Look at them go. God, just <laughs> little toy soldiers. Pow, pow, pow. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> look how quickly they I move. love them. They're so fast. They're so cute. Da, 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 da. Making Man. their way downtown. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> They're just little cutie pies. I bet they're like, um, you know, some type of like horrible cyborg or something, but they, they do just they do just do the best that they can. <laughs> <laughs> they're very good little boys. Um, oh, I could watch a whole video of just them just like... Da, 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 da. Yeah? The, <laughs> what's that thing on YouTube? It used to be um, like the L Lombi Walk or something like that. It's like when three characters walk in a straight line. Um, anyways. What? I'll, I'll see if I can't put it up there in editing. Um, bear ops to skip. Interesting choice there. Nano Repair Kit coming out for our red player. Our red player would really do... Ah, oh, he doesn't have enough cash. Oh, goes with an overlord. Okay. You know what's better than an overlord? Um, probably a Vulcan. A Vulcan would really help. Or even, heck, just some Stormcallers. Um, now for our red player would be pretty darn good. Um, <laughs> uh, Bear just kind of wants to play Fang, though. And we've seen the mass Fang build quite a bit. Um, that could be really, really powerful. Um, looks like these arc lights. Man, if these arc lights. Oh, they don't have the ability to get the power shield. Power, or um, the armor. The armor reflection would be really powerful for them. Just because, look at those fangs. Just cut through the, uh, the arc lights. In fact, the steel balls honestly kind of weren't needed there. Let's see if there's enough fang. Luckily, the fang came in from downtown. 
Um, one group of level two Fang is probably not enough to take out the uh, Overlord, but with the tower drop, it looks like they're gonna be in a much better position. Here they come. Here I come, I am Cinnamon. Just a bunch of little lasers. And the Overlord was targeting, the oh my God, the Overlord goes down. Yeah, what, what's your catchphrase? <laughs> Shabuzi. Shabuzi. I don't like it. <laughs> you change it to whatever you want it's it to be. It's funny, but you, know, you can make kind it. of annoying. Well, just like most <laughs> things in life that are funny. Um, yeah, there's our glasses smashing together again. Nerd Supremes. Um, subsidized Mustang. Bear again skips. Man, I like I like Bear's place. Just only Fang and Steel Balls. Constant skipping. <laughs> That's quite a bit of fun. There's two units on the field. Now we have seen, um, there's a very popular YouTuber named Day9 um, that I used to watch way back in the StarCraft days who's gotten interested in Mechabellum recently. And they've kind of um, publicized this just Mass Fang. And we did see it in a couple weeks ago, there was a tournament where Mass Fang um, on both sides uh, for the tournament championships, of course, Mass Fang won. Um, a couple of key units for this though are fortresses or some giant unit. Here's the melting point. And the melting point's in an extremely good spot. This is why you don't play your giant on the front line. The melting point is a, immediately gonna target it down mm -hmm. and kill it. Um, so it, this will work out exceedingly well. Here they go. Here they go. That missile's going out pretty quick. Unfortunately, the melting... Yeah, there it is. All right, so that's a dead dead overlord immediately. And that overlord even has tech on it, so that's a huge loss. The little... Oh, my God. These little uh, fang just killing, killing away. And more importantly, guarding the overlord against the steel balls because the steel balls keep targeting the fan, fang first. Uh, this is a really good pickup here for our red player as well. Uh, Mustang with range does exceedingly well against Fang, but the Steel Balls kind of guard the Fang as well. That's where these kind of unit dualities or um, partnerships work really well with each other. And that's why I mentioned having a fortress could be quite good because the fortress for Bear um, would soak up a lot of the damage that would normally be going out on these Fang. Oh, did you see what happened there? No, I didn't. Okay, so what happened was that uh, our red player played the field recovery, which allows you to scrap a unit. Um, and by scrapping the unit, you can then um, redeploy it anywhere for the mm -hmm. same cost. Mm -hmm. Now you can only deploy two, three, possibly four units a turn, depending on the circumstance. So it's not a great option to do this, just because it, um, it does cut down on the amount of units that you can deploy. But if your overlord, in this case, was super out of position, it's worth it because that's a very expensive unit. You, you just want it to get it Wait, get out of the way. Wait, you said red player did that? Yeah, our red player. Oh. So bear is the blue player here. Yeah. Our red player is over here. Um, and it looks like they're going to grab a couple. What happened to the overlord that was on that one side? That's what happened. He was uh, our red player recycled it and then placed it behind the rest of his unit. So he just moved it, um, kind of like a chess piece. He just decided to take it off the board for a second, remove it, and play it back. And these Mustang are really showing how great they are at killing Fang. Um, wow, just an absolute slaughter. The Overlord support is actually doing quite well here, especially with this heal. That Overlord had taken a phenomenal amount of damage, but was able to make it back out. And it looks like he'll have enough. Yes, there will definitely be enough to take out the... Um, is this a level 2? Yeah, the level 2 melting point, even with the um, uh, Enhanced on the Cano bot. Uh, very good. Orbital Javelin could be strong. I do love a good nuke. Yeah. Yeah. A nuke is basically what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. uh, Orbital Javelin. Mega death. Mega death. <laughs> wow, what a great phrase. Um, and Handsome Mechano, it was me refer repl uh, referring to the Amplifying Core, if anybody else played World of Warcraft. Um, these Overlords could go with an upgrade, but honestly, I'd be a little nervous about upgrading these giant units just because the giant killer is already on the field. Melting Point is probably the best answer to any giant unit, um, just universally. However, of course, there are some, um, like Snipers or Phoenix, can deal with giants quite well as well, uh, but Melting Point's just kind of do it the best. It looks like we're going to start seeing Fang on the flanks of Bear. Interesting. This is just to slow oh, wow. down. Yeah, this is just to hold this melting point in place for the Javelin. Javelin landing on the opposite side does a ton of damage. Oh my god, and this Overlord just needs some support. It really does just need some support if it's going to continue to survive, and it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. That Javelin barely dented this melting point. 
and the melting point cleans up the phoenix steel balls are going to go through our red player is going to suffer at least 1200 damage maybe less if this overlord does dry or this um melting point one melting point does go down that actually will save our red player a ton of hp 400 hp exact nice nice it's quite good quite good indeed speed this little part up there we go boom <laughs> and boom goes the dynamite <laughs> oh man what a what an interesting game it's really quite fun that these units are all on one side um, it's it's and even though all those units are on one side somehow our red player is still winning this flank with only these two and I hope that bear realizes this and starts to capitalize on it just putting a couple of units in the flank here would allow him to potentially win what did bear pick up there senior manufacturing specialist makes sense or no I think bear <laughs> I think bear skipped again or maybe grab the assault fang I think it's the assault fang for bear senior manu no both players have the assault fang yeah bear did skip Wow bear just needs the cash he needs to keep these fang going uh, i'd like to see the shielding on the fang but it looks like this mass burning will probably clear away the majority of the front line uh, let's see if our red player can start to make a comeback i don't think so though i think bear has this in the bag more mustang more mustang will help being the front line for these um, steel balls is very important and the steel balls being able to spawn crawlers is a really good way to help steel balls close with enemy units because what happens is that let's say these fang kill this this level three unit of steel balls let's say they only kill one the fang will switch targets to whatever is closest to them so if those crawlers get in front of the rest of the steel balls then they'll be able to soak up that damage and unfortunately all the fang hop into the fire and die um, yeah now the steel balls are going to be able to push in and try and make it out let's see if there's enough of them i don't think they'll be able to take out these melting points oh my god the melting points have the energy diffusion or diffraction even allowing them to deal with chaff a little bit easier not as good at taking out giants but at this point they're level two and level three so they're gonna do just fine wow man look at all the lasers <laughs> everybody's giving like full firepower that's right i'm a fire in my laser <laughs> once again the poor little uh, melting point on the on the side goes down oh and this would be annoying if bear's shield does drop there it does that's a hundred dollars lost that is unfortunate that is really really unfortunate good damage not the end of the world though rain specialist for bear and electromagnetic impact coming out here for our red player there aren't any shields left on the field for the red player, so I understand why they took this, as well as if over or melting points just get out of control, they become really difficult to deal with. Now that the melting points are level three with a huge amount of upgrades and level four, it's super difficult to deal with. Uh, yeah, you have to get storm callers. Storm callers would really be the answer to help clear away a ton of these units. The storm callers can drop fire. The Stormcallers can put fire downrange, i.e. shoot long distances, outdistance the melting points, and deal significant amounts of damage, as well as Stormcallers have the ability to get the tech to disable enemy tech. So that would just slow down these uh, extremely aggressive melting points quite a bit. I don't think this Overlord on the flank is long for this world, unfortunately. This is a weird placement for this Overlord. Completely unsupported, and these Overlords are now spawning wasps? Wasps are okay units, but they don't have shields, they won't have any tech upgrades, and there's a really, really good answers to wasps in the form of these super aggressive fang, as well as these melting points. Granted, if the melting point's shooting at the wasp and not your overlord, it's probably worthwhile, but I don't know if this will work out. Ooh, I do like this. Our red player's trying to reassert dominance on the flank that they've already been winning. So I like that quite a bit. There's the electromagnetic impact, slowing down this level three overlord. Let's see if the steel balls can get online. They are online. Oh, and they're dealing a lot of damage. Down it goes, wow. And that just as we guessed, that overlord was not long for the world, but is there enough DPS to take out the rest of these melting points? It looks like the answer is yes, at least for the one on the right, or the one in the center, the one on the right still standing proud, but only for a moment longer. All right. Wow. Wow, 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 indeed. Bear takes a huge hit there. Oh, my God. Mm. Bear nearly died. That's terrifying. I hate the tanks. 
So weird thing that you can actually do with the tank is I, I believe that hasn't been fixed yet. The tanks can deploy out of any giant unit. So you can put that tank card onto your overlords and your overlord will just like shoot tanks out of it. What? Yeah, it's really weird. They just like spawn on the ground underneath it. Um, pretty cool. <laughs> just drop a tank out the cargo hold or whatever. Bear's a little nervous. It looks like he thinks it might be the end of the game. So grabbing a ton of units is, or a ton of shields is probably worthwhile. Just because he, he's got to be nervous about all of these skill cards that our red player currently has. And a bunch of crawlers. Okay. Crawlers that can spawn crawlers. <laughs> Interesting choice. Um, I'm trying to think. Will they ever make contact? I don't know if these crawlers will ever make contact, but they are a good shield. They may not make it. They may not make it. There's a lot of enemy units here. They're all going to be in range to shoot those crawlers. Maybe they're like the whipping boy. I think that's exactly it. They're the whipping boy. They're the human shield. Just to allow these fang to get some shots off. The fang don't have range yet, so they still have to close that distance. And the assault fang have even less range than usual. But it looks like that was exactly what needed to be done. Both front lines collapsing. Oh my god, there's a ton of overlords on the flank. Out goes the missile. Can these overlords pull it off? It doesn't look good. They're healing through a lot of the damage, though, and these overlords are starting to drop. Down goes the over or the melting point on the right. There's still three overlords left. Oh, no. This melting point has a lot of work to do. It's kind of doing it, though. Both melting points are kind of doing it, though. Oh, my God. I don't think the melting points will die. I no? No, I think it's going to have enough. I it might have enough. It's got a ton of HP. 360,000 HP. Yeah, Melting Point's gonna do it. Melting Point has a ton of HP, and that's why I said it's really scary when Melting Points start to run away with the game. Mm -hmm. They can get out of control because they can heal themselves, they have really long range, and their damage works against any unit. The Melting Points even have a little bit of splash damage on those lasers. Um, so that it's, those little lasers, they're shooting five of them out. They might be able to clear out this unit exceedingly quickly. There's the Vulcans for Bear. I think Bear just needs a little bit more anti-air in this case, but I don't mind the Vulcan. Because the Vulcan will clear away all of these ground units, which are really, really the thing, are, are really, really, the ground units are the things that are causing these Fang to suffer. Mm -hmm. Until the Fang get uh, range, they're going to be at the mercy of these uh, Mustang, and the Mustang will always outrange the Fang anyways. So I understand why Bear isn't getting the range on his Fang. But still, that extra 40 meters does help. Mm -hmm. uh, or shields, but again, the Mustangs. Mustangs with range are just kind of a very good counter to the, the Fang build. But Fang with melting points backing them up. Honestly, I like that considerably more than the Fortress. Um, just because Fortresses can't shoot up. And if we know anything, the air barrage that comes out of the Fortress is hot trash. Yeah. Yeah, how many, so we, we did uh, watch a game previously with Bree. How many shots do you think the Fortress has missed in that game? Oh, oh. I'd say like 90% of them. Exactly. It's yeah. ridiculous. All right, it all comes back down to these melting points. Melting points with a little bit of help, though, from the Vulcan. And that might be all the help that they need, as the Vulcan is able to peel away a lot of that damage. Yeah, I think the melting points have this again. Even though the towers dropped... All yeah, this... Those melting points are, like, carrying the whole round on their backs. Yeah, they're they're pretty darn good units. Um, in fact, the most recent tournament that uh, I was watching, I think I named it, like, Return of the Melting Points because <laughs> they are that powerful. Wow, this is a nail-biter, folks. Right on the edge of the neck seat. And neck and neck. Yeah. Uh, no tortoise and hare in this one, just only violence. <laughs> oh, my God. Are we double leveling? This is a level seven melting point. That's insanity. You almost never see a melting point to that degree. That is so good. So, so good. All right, mass shielding again for Bear. Does Bear opt to give his little fang either shields or the range? I don't think so. Lots of upgrades coming out here for a red player. A red player thinks it's the last part of the game and I don't blame him. $1,600. Wow. That's so much cash. Finally, we see the Stormcallers coming out for our red player. Uh, maybe a little too little too late, though. 
At this point, I would have liked to have seen maybe six units of Stormcallers on the field just hammering away at these units. Uh, without them, I don't know if our red player can pull this off. Bear's still sitting on 500 bucks, and that actually not having the storm uh, is going to be an issue. Luckily, the shielding is very good here for Bear. Oh, and even some wasps with shields. Oh my god, Bear did read my mind. Actually finally getting the range. So what this means is that the Fang don't have to advance. The Fang can actually stay underneath the shielding. That shielding is only 40,000 HP, but that's a lot more HP than a Fang has. Fang has 362 HP. Shield has 40,000. Oh. Yeah, so the Fang will be able to survive just a little bit longer. The shields will drop very quickly, uh, but at least they'll be able to just pl plink out a little bit of damage. Maybe even two, three shots per Fang, but that's three shots of 360 damage uh, in between what? I think there's three, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. What's three times six, Sweet Pea? 18. Whammo. So smart. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Huh? Kind of. Well, it's important to be able to do basic math. Um, I don't. I think that's one of the skills that our society is slowly drawing away from, unfortunately. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyways, lots of damage coming out here. It looks good. The lightning storm is mostly colliding with the shields. It will strike that overlord. Or sorry, the um, melting point. It looks like it's hitting these overlords in the background as well, actually. But the missiles are good. Missiles do go down there. I'm not sure what killed them. I think it may have been the lightning storm. A uh, friendly lightning storm with a little bit of friendly fire. Unfortunately, these melting points with the lifesteal might be able to survive this. Do these... Yes! Yes! No, please, let me see it. The storm callers have ex um, electromagnetic explosions. What that means is it slows down and disables enemy tech. This is exceedingly important because now these um, melting points are exceedingly slow. That just means that the Stormcallers can launch shot after shot after shot. Unfortunately, it's a little too little too late. If those mm -hmm. Stormcallers had come out three turns ago, that would have been that. But as it is, congratulations to Bear. Really good plays. Really great game. I greatly enjoyed um, uh, casting this with my lovely co-host. Mm -hmm. Bree. Yeah. <laughs> She's got that down. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed these casts, what's up? I have a hypothetical question that I figured we could discuss for a second. Okay. If so, mechs like man themselves, right? Correct. I would. But think. if you could like be inside of one, like a suit, like a mech warrior, like a mech warrior, what would you be? I'd be in a melting point or the Vul the Vulcan. Well, I don't want to be in a Vulcan because then you're committing like horrible war flames. crimes. I yeah. want to be there shooting flames. You want to be the flamethrower guy? Yeah. That's super dark. Why? Because you're burning people to death. I'd rather shoot flames than lasers. The lasers are... I think I'd rather be in a plane because I'd rather be in like a phoenix or something because I don't think other units would normally be able to shoot me. I think Machabellum is a little bit of suspension of disbelief. I would never try and shoot down a jet with a rifle. Like the likelihood that the bullet, Imagine the tracking this. on that would be insane. Okay. Me. You. The dressed, not dressed, but I'm half god emperor of mankind, half Vulcan. What? Just whoosh, 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 so you've created like some type of mech warrior <laughs> hybrid mm -hmm. where your titan looks like a Vulcan yes. and the god emperor of mankind. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that'd be pretty intense. I'd watch yeah. that movie. That'd be, that'd be amazing. All right. Well, we will see you in the future. Bye. <laughs> Bye.